Spiritual Teaching 276 Love Each Other 1. Among the crowds that come to listen to my lesson, I see the last arriving, those who are for the first time are listening to this word. They received the testimony of those who had previously been invited to my spiritual banquet, but they had refused to believe in my presence and in the arrival of the third era. 2. They came overcoming obstacles and prejudices, and it was enough for them to listen to the first words spoken by the lips of the spokesperson, to say, Teacher, it is you, I recognize the essence of your word, my spirit trembles. 3. Blessed are those who, already listening to me at the end of my communication in 1950, believe in my presence, because indeed I tell you, that my essence will not leave his heart even after my departure. Four. My voice is calling out to the great crowds, because for many spirits the end of their pilgrimage is drawing near on earth. That dejection, that boredom, that sadness that they carry in their hearts, are the proof that they already long for a higher abode, a better world. But it is necessary that the last stage they go through in the world, they live by obeying the dictates of your conscience, so that the footprint of your last steps on earth be a blessing for the generations that come to fulfill their various missions in the world. Five. The sadness of many men comes from not having found in their long journey a leafy tree in whose shadow to rest. They found trees on the road, but they were dry and their seed was useless. 6. All those men who have sought me, who have waited a long time, will soon hear my voice and come to it, because the last remnant of hope and the last gleam of faith have not been quenched in her heart. 7. My spiritual work awaits you. It is the stout tree they seek, under whose shade they want to rest and with whose fruits they yearn to sustain themselves. 8. When they arrive and satisfy their hunger and thirst and delight in resting, they will see all their past pass through their imagination. The hard days in the desert, the darkness with its temptations, the abysses full of dangers, vices, and of death. They will remember one by one the bitter chalices they drank and contemplate in themselves the traces of the struggle of the hard day. 9. Here they will regain peace. I wait for you. Clear the way so that they do not get lost and prepare a hymn, so that you welcome them with celebration and joy in your hearts. 10. They will begin as toddlers before my new revelations. Then with their love and determination, they will become disciples. And when your spirit has truly sustained itself and is impregnated with this essence, you will no longer look for a tree for shade. Wherever you or you will feel my presence and in it you will find shade, shelter, fruit, rest and peace. 11. How important it is that the latter find the former strong, so that they may be strengthened by their good example and from their first steps they are guided by the path of obedience, zeal and clarity. 12. Many times you have had me as a teacher, but when I manifest myself as a judge, you feel overwhelmed with fear, then you would like to purify yourselves in an instant from even the most insignificant stain, to show you clean before me. The regret of having offended me translates into tears and your spirit seeks me in prayer. When you understand that you have done a good act of repentance, you calm down and feel worthy of listening to the word of the divine judge that comes to touch the spirits with its light. 13. Blessed are those who repent and form firm resolutions of amendment and regeneration, because they will succeed in rising above the impure and the superfluous. Without repentance, meditation, and purposes of improvement, you will not have a foundations to the sanctuary that you have to build in your spirit, but if you recognize your faults and fight from henceforth, your consciousness will guide you in all the works of your life. 14. You are far from those times when men sought their purification through the sacrifice of innocent victims. You have also understood the futility of the misunderstood fasts and penances that you practiced for a long time. Now you know that only regeneration and spirituality can give your spirit peace and light. 15. I came in the second era as a man preaching my truth by example. I stopped the useless sacrifice of innocent and unconscious beings, sacrificing myself for the sake of a perfect lesson in love. Lamb of God, you called me for having immolated that people in their traditional festivals. Certainly my blood was shed to teach men the way of their redemption. My divine love was poured out from the cross on humanity for all times, so that in that example, in that word, 
In that perfect life humanity was inspired and found salvation, purification of sins and elevation of the spirit. 16. You are already understanding that I came to set an example, but that you will have to do the merits imitating me, in order to carve for you a mansion of eternal peace, a garment of light and an inexhaustible peace. 17. I want in my new apostles and disciples strong, spiritualized and full of the light of knowledge, the knowledge I have given you through my revelations that I have made to you in the three eras. I do not want that you analyze my spirit or anything that belongs to the spiritual as if they were material objects. I do not want that you study me in the manner of scientists, because you would fall into great and regrettable confusion. I have taught you to raise your spirit through prayer in order to humbly and respectfully consult your Father, because then the Arcanum will be open to let you contemplate what is reserved for your knowledge, and you will feel the divine light of inspiration come to your understanding. 18. Prayer is the means revealed to your spirit to reach me with your questions, with your concerns and your desires of light. Through this communication you can dispel your doubts and lift the veil that hides any mystery. 19. Prayer is the beginning of spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication that in times to come will flourish and will bear fruit among this humanity. Today I have revealed all this to the people who listen to me, so as the forerunner of the time of spirituality. 20. Do not think that until then my spirit will begin to vibrate on that of all men. I say that my vibration, my inspiration, my presence and my light have been with men in all times, but that they had never been prepared to receive my messages directly. 21. At all times I have come to you, I have always spoken to you, I have always sought you, instead you have never come to me the true way, you have never spoken to me with the language of the spirit, nor have you looked for me where I really am. 22. Do not be discouraged by my word when I point out your faults. I also tell you that all errors and deficiencies that humanity has had, I have forgiven them, opening before their spirit an era of light, in that he will know his imperfections, so that he will rise from his stagnation and know the truth that is in my work in which until now he has not managed to penetrate. 23. Do you want my voice to answer your questions tomorrow? Learn to pray because if you don't whatever it is, it will then be your mind that answers, and what can it reveal to you if it has never penetrated the kingdom of the Spirit? Let it be the Spirit that rises, the one that reaches me, knocks on the doors of my love and my wisdom, and through it you will find the wonderful life that you have never discovered. 24. Go to the bottom of my word, O oh, disciples, and there you will find the essence of the lesson that I have given you this day. 25. I am your friend, the one to whom you can entrust your secrets, the one who gives everything for you. 26. I see that you come to entrust me with a sorrow, so that I can free your heart from it, and in truth I will grant it to you, but it will be when you understand that evil should not be cured superficially, but in its origin, that in addition to praying and asking, it is necessary to amend, reflect and regenerate. 27. What merit does it have that I heal you from a disease or that I free you of any suffering, if you persist in the cause of your sufferings? 28. Pray that you receive my light and through it you come to discover the causes or origin of your trials and vicissitudes. Ask so that in your humility you feel strengthened, but first put all your willingness to avoid everything that could harm you, in spirit as well as in body. 29. Come all to me and heal of your ills. Make your faith work the miracle of restoring your health and achieving your salvation. The miracle is not in me, but in you, but do not forget that it is no longer my tunic that you will have to touch to receive the miracle, but you must come before my spirit through your faith and elevation. 30. How many have found their health on this path, because in time they knew how to discover the origin of their ills? and they put all their faith and their will in fighting until winning. How many have also walked away sad, confused or disappointed, without having achieved what they wanted, because they believed that just by approaching one of these meeting places or simply asking, they had already achieved everything. They were never interested in discovering the cause of their suffering and had to leave without having reached the well they were looking for. Those are the ones who live without spiritual light, the ones who ignore the cause of their sufferings, and the value of health or peace. 31. 
Most men have a Thomas in their hearts, they would like to see and touch to be able to believe and I say that those tests granted to the most incredulous of my disciples will not be repeated at this time, because the world will not have me again as a man and because that example remained like an open book in front of each of my children, to analyze that lesson. 32. Do not think that only by becoming a man I can manifest myself to the world. No, because now I am being felt spiritually in you, and that is a proof that I can manifest myself before man in an infinite number of shapes. I have created everything and I know you, for which I know how to make the spirit of this humanity shudder in their sleep. 33. My humility at that time made the hearts of the people vibrate with love. Accustomed to contemplating ostentation of those who claim to represent me in the world, when they saw that the King of Kings came without a crown and lacked a throne on earth, they opened their eyes and beheld the truth. 34. So also at this time I will shake the world with my humility, of which I have given you the first tests, seeking the simplicity and recollection of the first to feel the arrival of the new time, to manifest my message among them. 35. Woe to those who have taken my name to spiritually govern humanity if they have thereby parked or confused because they will see thousands of men. Depart from among their ranks in search of the truth. O oh, men of science, who instead of making life light, have made it more painful for men, because then they will see the poor and the ignorant perform wonders that they would not be able to do with all their science. 36. The miracles of this time will also be written for the witness of future generations, but in truth I tell you, these miracles will be performed more in spirit than in matter. 37. In that second era I healed a multitude of sick people. I cured the blind, lepers possessed, deaf, paralyzed and dumb. They were all diseased in their bodies, but by the miracle done in their bodies, their spirit was resurrected. 38. Now I come first to give birth to the spirit, to awaken it, to give it freedom, to ignite his faith and to heal him from all evil so that later he take charge of strengthening and healing your body. 39. Don't you think that from time to time I must find you more advanced and that therefore my lessons have to be higher and higher? 40. That is why at this time the world will not see me being born in a stable nor will it see me die on a cross, but he will have to rise to feel my spiritual presence. 41. Humanity. Does the pain, misery and chaos that surround you at this time seem unforeseen? If you are surprised, it is because you were not interested in my prophecies and did not prepare. Everything was planned and everything was announced, but you failed to believe and now you rush the consequences like a very bitter cup. 42. Also now I am prophesying through human understanding. Some prophecies are of realization of what is next and others for more distant times. This people that listens to them has the great responsibility of making them known to humanity because they contain light that will make men understand the reality in which they live, so that they stop in their speedy race to the abyss. 43. My emissaries will make known to the nations that to continue in their foolish and incessant ambitions of greatness and power, using forces and elements that they do not yet know or know how to use, this earth that was the paradise created by the Lord and later Valley of Tears for human sins and disobedience, will remain turned into a field of death and silence, an uninhabitable world, because of the perversity of men. 44. Could you call that conquest or triumph of science? Triumph will be for humanity when they come to live in peace and harmony, because then you will have built the foundation for your greatest conquests, both human and spiritual, will have fulfilled the precept that advises you love one another. 45. Crowds eager to question you about the events will come to this people from other countries, asking what you have witnessed at this time and also about the revelations and prophecies that I have delivered, because in many parts of the world they have received my messages that say that in the West has descended my divine ray to speak to humanity of this time. You will see how instantly other peoples and nations will come looking for you. Then the men of the great religions will be surprised that it is not them whom I came looking for. 46. Now you understand why I want you to fight against your materialism, to destroy all your doubts and confusion, because I do not want that when your brothers come before you, they suffer disappointment or doubt. I do not want that instead of calling you brothers, they are going to become your enemies. 47. 
Does so much confusion as you reign in the world not hurt you? Don't you suffer in the face of so much spiritual darkness? 48. Be good disciples. Great in your knowledge and humble in your way of teaching, I tell you that you should take advantage of every opportunity life offers you to sow. But you must keep in mind that everyone who calls himself a teacher without being one will be responsible for everything he does on his way, as well as for the evidence that he receives in his wake. 49. This is a precious moment for you to reflect, so that you free yourself from routine, place yourself in a path of advancement and you come to truly know the purity of this work, because not all of you have considered its purity and have not understood it. I still contemplate among you such strange forms and practices, that although they please some who have a tendency to rites, they are most confused and do not realize that they are only preparing a mock motive for tomorrow. 50. Do you think the master fears that men destroy his work? No, people, the father can fear nothing. His work is indestructible. What I want is that you love the truth, that you present my work in all its purity, because if you don't, you will cause a lot of pain, just as all those who, within any religion, without charity for their brothers they have confused, lost or hurt their kindred, giving them stones for bread, darkness for light or lies for truth. 51. You have all received this word, people, you are aware of what you have heard and yet I tell you. Nothing obliges you to serve me or to follow the path traced. But whoever is willing, who cannot resist the love that his heart feels, whoever is not afraid to bleed his plant on the path, take up his cross and come after his master, ready to serve me in your brothers. 52. It is Elijah who has been among the great crowds to teach them the way of truth, to tell them about the kingdom of God, to show men spirituality by freeing them from confusion, injustice, and evil. 53. Elijah invites men to repentance, showing them virtues and love, to guide them like sheep of his sheepfold to me. 54. In this third era, I have placed my universal ray in the understanding of man to give you my word. Still humanity has not yet realized my divine manifestation, because he has forged many gods according to his understanding, according to his ideas and I tell you, there is only one true God who has no beginning and no end, and has given man a spark of your divine spirit that is the light of your consciousness that teaches you to distinguish good from evil. 55. Chosen people, men of science, of different creeds and doctrines, of different sects and religions, prepare to scrutinize the fruit of this spiritual doctrine. They will ask you, what is the God you are looking for? Yes, you are ready. You will be the enlightened people who know how to answer every question. I want you to know how to defend this cause, because words of truth will flow from you. If you have spiritualized, fear nothing of men, because you will give witness to my truth with your words, thoughts, and deeds. 56. If you comply with my law, men will not mark you as impostors, because they will contemplate your obedience and they will see you as their own brothers. 57. Everyone who follows good principles, who ponders his actions, who turns away lies from his word, who acts with love, piety and charity for his fellow men, he will feel in himself the manifestation of my divinity and will be similar to his God in the greatness of his acts and in his purposes to do good. 58. How few are those hearts! Short is the number of those who thus fulfill my law. More to you than you are the chosen people I have taught you to do good. You can do it with your good thoughts, with your sentence. Through prayer you can raise your spirit towards my divinity, because being infinite, I descend to your world to caress you, to give you comfort and to teach you to obey my law. 59. Day by day I have been among you to teach you to practice the virtues, to entrust you with my love and I have enlightened your spirit and your understanding, so that wherever you rise up with the purpose of doing good, with the purpose of regeneration, I have taught you to forgive, so that he who is in darkness may see that you are the children of light, and thus with your good example you can show the world the way of truth and you can testify that you have received my word with your works of love. 60. Men will have to accuse you of nothing, because they will contemplate that you have been inspired by my spirit to practice good. 61. Practice the spiritual work as it is my will, so that you show new horizons to humanity, so illuminate the dark paths that he has traveled so far. 62. Confess directly to me, 
because I am the only one who can penetrate in your spirit and listen to your secrets with infinite mercy and love. My peace be with you.